Welcome back to Living Local. Purchasing a home is one of life's biggest investments, and that can be intimidating to many folks, especially with all the misconceptions out there about the buying process. Today, we're busting six common home buying myths that may be holding people back from exploring their options. Joining us via Zoom is Kyle Robinson with the Robinson Group, brokered by eXp Realty. Kyle, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, so Kyle, first of all, a lot of folks just assume that they can't buy, so they rent. Why might this assumption be off? I think that a lot of times people get stuck in the ways of what they've been doing, right? So people don't like to get out of their comfort zone. So if you've been renting, it just makes sense to rent. Whereas we have a lot of conversation with rental leads that come into our system. And we ever thought, we always ask them, have you thought about buying? And a lot of times the answer is no. So we really walk them down the path of why it'd be a lot more advantageous to actually own the property than to be somebody's tenant right because at the end of the day typically the person who's benefiting from that is the landlord as you're paying down equity as they're hopefully gaining appreciation so we have this conversation about the dream of home ownership and what it takes to get there i think a lot of times people are intimidated by the process but if they actually got in touch with a local realtor they'd get an idea that it's really not as complicated as people might make it perceive to be yeah, definitely. And today we're going to break down some of those misconceptions that people may already have ingrained in their mind to realize that the process really isn't all that intimidating. Now, a lot of people think that your credit must be perfect to buy a home. Is this true? Yeah, so that's a definitely a common thing. We get a lot of people that will come into our systems and say, you know what, I've got credit issues. Okay, well, let's talk about those credit issues and get an idea of where you need to go and how we're going to get you there. Right. So I think a lot of times people are reluctant to think about buying a home because of their credit score. In all reality, if we get them in, part, or in touch with one of our partner lenders that are good at getting people's credit scores up, it's amazing how fast something can change from a credit rescore, from just doing a couple tweaks with what you currently have as far as balances goes. We can get that credit score up very, very quickly. And I think a lot of times people are concerned about their credit score and really just don't have that conversation with anybody because maybe they're embarrassed but in all reality you need to reach out and let's figure out a path to get you to where you want to be if you want to be a homeowner let's set up the road path or the road map to be able to get you there and kyle often you'll hear people say now is a bad time to buy so what's your take on timing and seasons and all of that yeah, absolutely. So typically in most real estate communities, you run two real estate seasons, one from mid-February up until about the end of June. And then once again, starting up about the end of July through about the Thanksgiving time. And I think in all reality, I think that that's wrong. I think that I can tell you that our team personally has not slowed down for three years. So I would definitely recommend and tell people that when you're ready, you should do it. I always tell people, well, they always ask me, when should I list? I said, whenever you're ready and you feel comfortable and able to actually let people in this property is when you should be doing it. So the common misconception is to not list the house in the wintertime. Well, I can assure you this, if there's limited inventory, there's people still moving in the, the wintertime and actually it can actually create a bottleneck for you to get more money just because of the fact that there's nothing else out there. So don't be, def don't be concerned about listing it at the time that you're ready because you never know what's going to happen. Right. Now, what are some common misconceptions when it comes to the down payment? Yeah, so I think that a lot of people are thinking in terms of what it used to be. You know, a lot of times, a lot of these banks wanted 20% down. Well, I can assure you that's certainly not the case. It's actually pretty rare that we see borrowers put down 20%. So typically right now, I would say anywhere from 35 to 5% is what we commonly see for down payments from borrowers. There's also local local lenders in the area that have options for 0% down. I'm not always recommending that people do that. I certainly want to make sure they're in a financial place where they can pay their bills, but there's definitely options out there for every single person. And I definitely recommend that you ask questions, not read the myth that you have to have 20% down to buy a house. To be frank, there's not many people that have the ability to do that. So you know what, if you have no money or you have 20% down, you can still buy a house. Kyle, elaborating on some of those financial misconceptions, what myths are out there surrounding loan type qualifications? 
Yeah, I think that a lot of people don't really know what loan types are out there. So I think that the biggest thing is that you need to get an idea of that. And how you're going to do that is by reaching out to your local lender and figuring out what loan you qualify for or what loan would be best in your situation. Just because you qualify for two different loans, you need to dive in and see what's best for your situation. So I think the lender is one of those people that uh, certainly needs to have that conversation. Um, I think that a lot of people don't understand that there's certain loans out there that are available, like a USDA loan. Areas with 20,000 or less people, you can qualify for a USDA loan. So like in places like Leclerc, that loan particularly is a very good loan for people and it's 0% down. Uh, VA is also 0% down. So there's a lot of good loan options, but I can tell you this year, we did see a lot of people that were qualified for a VA loan that actually went conventional because the difference of the interest rates. So I definitely think that you should have a conversation with your local lender and get an idea of what's best for your situation. And Kyle, another common belief is that it's cheaper to buy a fixer upper. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so I think that this depends on the type of person and what their skill set is or what their intentions are. So we get a lot of people who watch HGTV and they're like, hey, we want to find this diamond in the rough and we're going to we're going to do all this work ourselves. Well, one thing you have to keep in mind that if you're finding that diamond in the rough, there's going to be certain qualifications that you're going to need to be able to get that property. One being that most likely it's going to either have to be a conventional loan that doesn't have a whole lot of strings attached to it or some type of commercial product or line of credit or cash. So a lot of times people think that they're able to go buy these foreclosures or fixer uppers, but unfortunately they don't qualify to be able to get a loan that would be able to actually purchase that. So I definitely, I definitely encourage people that are interested that you know, have the financial setup to be able to go out and fire and fix her upper because you're going to be able to create more equity off the back and hopefully get some good appreciation along the way. So I think long term, if you can do it, it's the best option. But I can tell you right now, I've had a lot of conversations with, bar or with buyers who thought they wanted to go down that path. And then once I explained what it actually took, they're like, you know what, I think I'm going to go to something that's more put together or turn key. So I think it depends on your situation. Don't just assume because you watch it on TV, that's reality. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is, especially from HDTV, is these people think that they get pre-approved for let's say 200,000 and they go buy a house for 100,000, that they're gonna get the difference of the 100,000. That is not how it works. So you certainly need to have a conversation with your local lender and your local realtor to get an idea of what your plan is. So that way you guys can plan accordingly. So I, I think that it's depending on the person, a fixer upper is a good thing. And depending on the person, fixer upper might not be a good thing. There's a lot of things that potentially come up and there's a lot of skeletons in the closet that you might not necessarily see on the front end. So you need to be prepared for it. Kyle, thank you so much for clearing up these common home buying misconceptions. We so appreciate your time. I appreciate it, Brittany. I hope you have a great day. Yeah, you too. For more information, you can visit the Robinson Group, QC.com. We'll also have those details posted on ourquadcities.com.